Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Come on in, sit down, grab a drink. I got you for about 10 minutes. Um, I'm just going to be painting um, one of the pre-drawn canvases that I have prepared for a paint party um, that'll go down in about a week or two. I like to just sit down and see what it's like from the perspective of my guests. So this is the one that we'll be doing. As you can see, I've already messed up. I'm, uh, things are falling apart. I started to just say, never mind and cut this camera off and go to bed. But I'm glad I continued because <laughs> it turned out really nice. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to be doing too much talking. I'll pop in here and there and explain some of the things that I'm doing right now. I'm just working on the background. I took um, a teal color that I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to use this teal color for majority of the sky. I'll come in a little bit later and do a dark blue towards the bottom and pull in some white from the top just to kind of give the illusion of a deep sky. It's a rainy day here in Norman and I just thought it would be the most peaceful time for me to knock out some of these canvases. I've got like I said, a paint party coming up. It's 90s themed and I'm so excited. I'm a product of the 90s, so I cannot wait to show up and show out for this thing. I've got eight different canvas options for people to choose from. And so I like to just sit down and, and do an example painting of each of those so they know what it could potentially look like. I know everyone's will probably end up looking at a lot different, but I am so excited for the 90s music and to see people dress in their 90s fashion. I'm just so excited. So now you'll see me come in with that blue and start trying to blend that into the teal color. Here in a moment, you'll see me um, pick up a little bit of white and start working that in from the top, blending that into the teal. My goal here was to create um, this illusion of deep sky. So I don't know about you guys, but uh, whenever I was younger, I used to see this a lot. See shoes hanging from power lines. And I didn't really know what it meant at the time. In my head, I just thought, okay, there must be like a neighborhood bully in the area. <laughs> Somebody who threw your shoes up there. Um, but now as an adult, I know there are many reasons that you might find some shoes on a power line. But regardless, from the perspective of a, a small child, it just looked like they were so unreachable. They were so far out of reach that that the shoes were now just a part of the environment, just like a tree or a cloud. They belonged to the birds. It was a part of nature <laughs> in my neighborhood to see some shoes up there. They were just going to be there until a tornado came and knocked them loose. Um, but sometimes that even didn't work. But yeah, this is definitely one of the cooler um, canvas paintings that I've done. I really liked how this one turned out. When I'm hosting and instructing paint parties, I usually give everyone artistic freedom to uh, make any creative decisions they want to make. I, I'm i not a huge fan of paint parties where everyone's artwork looks exactly the same at the end. I really like to see everyone's personality kind of jump out. Um, I did yellow on the shoe because I really like yellow shoes. I really dig yellow clothes and apparel. So it just made sense to me to, to go yellow, but 
um, in a class setting. I would tell them to do whatever color they want to do. Um, now I'm just doing some happy clouds, doing clouds pretty much down to mid canvas. Like I said, I just want to give the illusion that these are way up in the sky um, and are untouchable. So just filling in some clouds, putting some highlights on the clouds. I do a base color and then while that dries, I dress some things on the shoe and then jump back in the cloud. So I'm just kind of jumping around, allowing different parts of the canvas to dry and then addressing other things. I don't worry too much about painting over the lines and stuff because I know uh, towards the end I'll go over those lines and clean them up with a marker or a sharpie or something like that. So I don't worry too much about staying in the lines. So I added some shadows and things to the yellow portion of the shoe. Um, then I went back and mixed some colors together to work on the bottom of the shoe. And then, like I said, I didn't worry too much about painting over those lines because I knew I would go back and clean them up with a marker or a Sharpie. Didn't worry too much about that. Then it was time, um, like I said, clean stuff up and then add the black. When I added the black, that's when things really started to come together and look more closely to, to the way that they will look in the end. So this part is very exciting. Black is usually one of the last things that I will add to a piece uh, because it is so pigmented and it really does start to complete the look. Listen, I know I said I was not going to talk much. I done talked through this whole thing. My bad. But whatever. Just picking this up and moving it out of the way so I could lay it down and go over those spots with the Sharpie. And then I will be done. You'll see how it ends up looking when I'm done um, outlining and tracing things. Finish the outlining and now it's just time for my little goof ass signature and it's all done. And this is the final product and I think it is so cute. And it go where? Where you think? Straight in my bin, baby. $25 and I set that right on my vendor table for somebody to browse and pick it up. That's it. Okay. Love you. Bye.